that's a really nice inspiration uh, to pick up Storm just 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 because I saw a meme on Reddit. <laughs> well, I'm trying to uh, improve my hero puddle, which right now consists of two heroes, really. Well, three. That's exactly the same as me. So you're you're in good hands. Yeah, I've just got a bunch of um, pretty random questions, but maybe you have something that you'd like to. I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot you can say without even me prompting you. I mean, I know how the hero works. I'm legend. F Am I legend four or five? Legend five. So, like, I don't have to be told like certain things, but most of what I'm confused by on Storm is uh, how you play in like how you play into hard games, like. I play against heroes where they all have a disable for you, or five tanky heroes, or if they're five manning, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's let's divide this session into smaller sessions. So your first question would be how to play Storm into lineups where there's a lot of counters, right? Yeah. Okay, so usually what you want to do is rush Orchid, but the thing to remember is about Orchid that uh, as soon as you get it against competent teams, they will try to, like you said, uh, group up by buy, buy, buy items against you like uh, Yules, Glimmer. So, so the way to play those games, there's actually two ways. One, one of them is to get a, instead of Orchid, get a Bloodstone so you can play behind the team. Or if you're going the Orchid route, the earlier you get it, the better. Uh, so let's say you're playing against a mid that can actually that you can actually kill, like a Sniper or a Zeus. But if the enemy has, has a lineup where they are pretty well geared against you, like, like a Silencer, Enigma, Void Spirit, Doom, not Void Spirit, the other Void. Anyway, uh, in that case, your best bet is to ignore the enemy mid laner and just farm, farm, farm. And when, what, what this will result into is if, if you get a 10 minute Orchid, which is pretty standard if you just farm, you can invade their, their safe lane uh, and find the hero, which is their win condition. So for example, Zeus and Sniper, I mean, they'll, they'll remain squishy for the majority of the uh, early game and, and, and the mid game, but, but like a Faceless Void, if you get a little Orchid, invade him. And that's not only a void, that's, that's as well true for anti-mage, for a, like a morphling or anyone. If you get an early orchid and invade, you just get a 3 kills on them, something like that, and, and they will not be able to play the game for the next 20 minutes or so, alone. They will have their team to protect you, which will give you enormous space. So, so that's our plan, basically, to summarize, is to get super early orchid and hunt down their main win condition hero. If you can't do that, then try to for, try for Bloodstone. Uh, and the third lowest option is to just hunt their mid laner and try to create space this way. Now, when you say 10 minute Orchid, are you skipping threads? I'm not sure how, how familiar you are with my content, but for the past few months, three months, I've been recommending uh, Battle Boots Null. Straight Orchid, no threads. Bottle Boots, no Orchid, no Wand. You, uh, uh, if you look at the screen right now, I, I'm showing my own app, which I also recommend for people to use. So, yeah, it's the Bottle, the Boots, the Null, two Sage's Masks for farming, then Robe of the Magi, whatever shit you need in the lane, and then it's just Straight Orchid. And then you get uh, threads. Yeah, that's what I do on Co-op too. I skip the threads. It goes fast, fast Orchid. 10 minutes though, that's that's pretty crazy. Well, my record is 8 minutes. 8 minutes on yep. an Orchid? Yep. How? Is the storm farm that fast? I guess I'll find out. I don't think I could ever get an 8 minute Orchid. Well, like I said, it's a record, so it's not only farming, but I probably got a bunch of kills on the enemy mid lane. Right, right. Okay. But, but my standard is around 10 to 12 minutes. Well, let's just go over like... uh. Before we get into like small stuff, like how you feel about certain runes, like let's talk about just uh, ability build and talent build. So like I know that some people, some games will be maxing overload and then others max remnant. I'm not sure when you want to do which. 
So this one is actually very simple to keep in mind. If an enemy hero is someone you can kill at level 6, in that case you will want to prepare by a maxing overload. If an enemy hero is someone you cannot kill, or if you are unwilling to even attempt a kill, in that case you will focus on farming and max remnants. Let's go over some examples. Let's see, common mids, common mids, common mids. Well, let's say it's clanks. Unless you have a sentry, it's actually... He's in the middle, actually. I mean, if you, if you, if you have gold for sentry and he's not awarding, then you can bait out his uh, evasion thingy and then kill him at 6. So in that case, you might want to see how the lane goes and do a hybrid build. So that's uh, 2 on the remnant, 2 on the overload. And if you get a kill potential, then just go and kill him. Amber, unless you have significant level advantage, it's a very hard to kill, hero to kill. Void Spirit is, is the same, unless you have level advantage, he will usually just uh, escape death pretty easily. So against those heroes, your best, best, your best bet is to just farm, in which case you max uh, Remnant. Now Sniper and Zeus, they're probably the most easiest, easiest heroes to kill. Definitely max Overload. Unless, like I said, you want to focus on farming and getting that fast orchid. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. What about talents? Also, they are pretty much set in stone. What I do is uh, overload damage helps you with the orchid's power spike. But if you decide to build Bloodstone, then minor region is better uh, for level 15. I, I usually play very greedily, so I always take the remnant damage. But you yourself can judge if, if there's a lot of like uh, powerful disables that go through BKB through Lincoln's, like, like a Black Hole, a Chronosphere, Doom, Silence, in that case you might want to boost their health region and walk with threats on strength. Level 20 is, again, it's decided by the draft. If your team has a lot of damage, so say a safe lane or Ursa, Morph Link or whatever, and you just need extra time to keep them to keep the enemy pinned down while the damage is being dealt. In that case, you go attack speed, which also synchronizes very nicely with the with the, the, the acronyms. But if you lack damage and you're playing more of a pickoff oriented storm spirit, in that case, take vortex. And twenty five is a no brainer. Right. And are there any hmm, are there any heroes that like? you instantly like do you take vortex against like high mobility heroes usually or is it still dependent on lineup like let's say you're against like an am and a quaff will you take vortex there or is it still just dependent on what's on your team usually take the attack speed because again i play greedily but yes what you say makes sense against uh high mobility heroes if you don't have additional disables then yeah uh vortex talent does make sense Okay. Again, it boils down to the previous explanation, like if you need extra disables, then you get this extra disable time by picking up the talent. Now, so in the past when I played Storm, I felt like my games, like if my games go well first three levels, then my, like I have the game in the back, but usually they don't. So what's my, what should be my goal as like a Storm for the first three levels and how should I think about it, and what should I be the first, three, I the first three levels is where you actually decide if you want to play a lane where you will try to kill the mid at level 6, or if you want to play a lane where you want to farm. So, for example, let's, let's take a very simple scenario. There's a, a hero that has skill potential on you, let's say Tony, or a shadow friend, and enemy punch comes and ganks you. So what happens is uh, you're, you're still level 2, the enemy is level 3 and a half. In that case, your kill threat lane, you knew that you could have killed Shadow Friend before, or Tony, your kill threat lane automatically becomes a farm lane because you've lost any advantage you had. Okay, that, you know, that makes sense. Because I always... Probably just play to try and kill the enemy mid. <laughs> That's probably not the right idea half the time. Uh, at low MMRs, it can absolutely be the right idea. But you mean, I mean, the higher you go, the more people are equipped dealing with storms, so other strategies might be necessary. 
if the enemy mid has raindrops, how bad? Like, how bad is that for your kill threat? Yeah, like, you do you, you do lose some damage, but otherwise, otherwise you can. It shouldn't impact your decision to jump on them. Okay. I always buy I always buy raindrops against storm, but it, yeah, it doesn't always seem to really stop them from killing me. Well, raindrops should be part of a package. So let's say you're playing Zeus against storm. What you want to do is uh, buy a wand, keep keep a lot of charges, plus raindrops, plus even possibly a bracer. This combination will allow you to survive most jumps. Just the raindrops might not be enough. Right. Um, so you said that you go Orchid first. Is there any time where you would deviate from that? Well, no. I'm way too greedy to adjust, <laughs> ad adjust my builds on the fly. And, and because I usually have a really good timing on Orchid, it, it usually works out for me, even in situations where Orchid might not seem ideal. I understand. I mean, I pretty much go or get every game on Quap. Like every, like it doesn't matter what I'm up against. It's it just it's super value. But like, on okay, let's talk about second item. So second, you second item. It looks like you go Kaya. Actually, no. After Orchid, oh, then okay, th then you think not even threads. After Orchid, then you think about what actually matters for the draft. So after Orchid, your options are Treads, Yules, Straight BKB, or the Bloodstone. Those are four items, and, and you will always judge on a match-by-match -match basis. Orchid, yes, you can be greedy, you can rush it, but afterwards, you must be smart about your items. Okay, and are there any heroes that um, you pretty much... Like, we'll pretty much default you into buying a certain item. Like, say, like, maybe against, like, LC or something you go for, like, a Lincoln's immediately or something like that. Something where you're like, okay, I'm against this hero. I need, I must have this item. Absolutely. Let's, let's again go over the hero list. So if I'm middle and I get a nice good orchid, my next item will depend on the enemy hero lineup. So let's, let's go over the list again. Then, 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 yes, LC. If she's pretty, pretty fat, brushing the Lincoln's after rocket does make sense. And the mage, front image. Well, he's AFK in the jungle for 30 minutes, so that's a non factor. What about um, Blood, Blood, Blood Seeker? If, if you find uh, Spirit Breaker, you can go all, all of it. Yeah, Spirit Breaker. You can't counter him with the use, but what I usually do is I just sip in his direction and he, he fails his, his 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 jumps. Okay, I forgot about that. So yeah, let's let's go over again. Uh Clinks. For Clinks you always want to rush uh Yules after the Orchid, skip threads, because he has a huge kill potential. He might have a death later, he might have Orchid. That's he's very it's very easy for him to one shot you if 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 you're not if you don't have means to escape, so you'll steal with that. Ember, you'll steal with that. Void Spirit. Well, Void Spirit doesn't impact much, I would say. What else, what else, what else, what else? Morphling doesn't impact much. Silencer, yes, you will want to rush yields against Silencer. Against Shadow Friend, you will want BKB, actually, because his yields and ult combo will fuck you up every time. Against TA, you can go the regular route, but you can also go Yules if she's very much ahead. Against Viper, there's a usual route, but you can also go BKB, because he does not deal with BKB Storm at all. Against Walker, the usual route. Lina absolutely want Yules. Necro might want Yules as well. Puck. You will want use because if you're if you practice, there's this move that when you go at the edge of Pax Ultimate and use Yules, you're actually placed upwards, which will break the leash as you are upwards in the air, and that literally counters. Wait, uh, what? You yeah. go to the edge of the leash range and Yules? Yeah, let me let me try to demonstrate that. 
What? I'm not that good at it, but like I can try. Nope. You get the idea. It's not. It's definitely not not, not, not something you can do every ultimate. But with enough practice, I think you can you can you can get a feeling. Okay, so a lot of those. Besides the yules for Lena, uh, if she knows that you have yules, won't she just wait for you to yules? I mean, if. She... Like, she can cancel that, right? She can cancel her stun, and you're kind of, like, left... I don't know, I always just feel better with a BKB against Lena. Against Lena? Yeah. Why? Well, if you have Yules, if she knows that you have Yules, then she can... Like, f she can fake her stun, for instance. And you're left kind of wondering, like, whether it even went off. So, like, you either have the choice to, like, Yules yourself again and dodge the stun or eat the stun. No, that, that's this not how... This happened to me a couple of times. That's not how Linus operate. If Lina sees a storm, she knows she will not be able to land the stun because of the zipping mechanic. So, usually what Linus do is they Yules you and then they try to land the stun on top as you land. And when you cast right. Yules on, on yourself, that essentially counters the stun. Okay, I guess having the zip is... makes that much harder for her to do. Yeah. I mean, she can maybe fake cast a stun as, as a land from her Yules. But I haven't, I haven't seen many examples of that. Um, how do you... So how do you think about regen? Like, are you, are you using clarities pretty much constantly, or do you prefer mangoes in lane? Or once again, I am extremely greedy. So what I'll do is I'll get man to circle it. If the enemy mid is someone that harasses much, I will get one branch as well. If the enemy mid is something that doesn't harass much, like a Kanka, Ember, or a Void Spirit. In that case, I'll skip the branch. I'll, I'll get those two instead, and I'll and I'll have a bottle shipped to myself after the first wave or the second wave. And that should 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 be enough to last until like level three or four. But for the newer players, right? But I mean, like I mean, like after that, are you? It looks like you have clarity. Like, what I'm trying to figure out is. Are you using both mangoes and clarities? You'd you'd say like pretty evenly, or are you like just preferring to use one or the other? Matchup dependent. If I have kill potential on the mid lane, I'll have three mangoes sitting there in case I will need a mana boost. If I'm farming jungle and getting a fast orchid, in that case, I'll continuously ship out clarities with every purchase. Okay, that's about what I figured. Yeah, I never thought about stockpiling mangoes though. That sounds really good. Well, mangoes are inefficient for farming, but they're great for that extra juice when you just need to do the finishing move on the enemy mid laner or something. Do you carry them like after the laning stage if you have an open slot? Usually not. It's 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 at a level six to like a ten when when the mana pool is most crucial. But but you still can carry it away later until item, like slots, item, item slots become a problem. So like with the standard build, you have a bottle, threads, what else was sort of orchid of course. Then maybe Kai, maybe you also one of one or the other. And then and then you still have one slot left over until your next big item. So, like, let's talk about when you would go Bloodstone, because I feel like in every game there's going to be something that... There's going to be something that you could benefit from purchasing a BKB or a Yules for, right? Like, pretty much every game you're going to be against some garbage like uh, Shadow Shaman or a... You know, pretty much every support has, like, a hard disable, so... 
I, I don't purchase deals that often. I definitely purchase PKB, but still not every single game. Right, so how do you make the decision to go Bloodstone? Uh, when, I, like, like I said, like pretty much every game, there's like there's gonna be hard disable somewhere on the enemy line. Are you talking go Bloodstone from the start or after Orchid? No, after, if... after Orchid. Okay, so it's it depends on on two factors actually. The enemy draft, if they don't have that many disables, you can you can play greedily. You can rush Bloodstone because that that on paper that is the next big item for you. If they have many disables, so if you know what kind of item you want after Orchid, like uh, Eagles for the Silence, Lincolns for the one big spell, or the BKB for many smaller disables, then you get that. But uh, if if the enemy draft allows you to not go Eagles, or at least not rush Eagles, not rush BKB, not rush Lincolns, and then the default is the Bloodstone. And the second the second factor that throws out the window, the first factor, is that if you are extremely ahead, like you won your mid lane, the enemy is in the jungle, and if your side lanes, at least one of your side lanes have won, in that case you as well can play greedily, because you know the enemy will not be able to punish you, and go for the blast stone. So if they have like one disable, you just, that's, you call that your kill target, you'll orc at that, and at that point the disable doesn't matter. But what if they have like uh, two and and like we're talking? Let's say that you're up against like a shadow shaman and a bane. I like. I, I at that point I feel like. Do you ever go Aeon disc? Aeon disc. Aeon disc is reserved specifically for longer and long disables, which you cannot itemize against. So that's uh, that would be black hole and chronosphere. And Fiend's Grib. Um, no, that's Lincoln's. Okay, you can pop Lincoln's, but I guess you should if, be able to get out in time. If if you're champing around the battlefield as a storm should do, Bane will simply not have the time to pop your Lincoln's and then ultimate, because you will he will reveal his location and you can either zip out or jump him. Popping <laughs> popping storms Lincoln's. You're a good player, is, maybe I don't know. I've gotten owned by Banes with Lincolns before a couple times. Popping Storms Lincolns is definitely not as easy as it sounds on paper. So, okay, so, but in general, like, let's say that if you have a free game, you're definitely going straight to the Bloodstone. Oh, yeah, Orchid, Bloodstone, and then Bloodthorn. That's like if everything's going smooth? Yeah, just gonna ride this death power spike until the throne falls. Um. Let's say you're against, like, f sometimes, so I'm a co-op spammer, so sometimes if I'm against, like, four, sometimes I'm even against, like, five very tanky heroes. Like, people at my MMR tend to pick, they tend to pick heroes that are just really durable, so that they can, like, just be stupid with them and get away with it, right? So, yeah. like, I'll be in games where, like, I'm against an Ogre, a Bristle, a DK, a <laughs> Ursa, uh, you know, like, pretty much like four to five tanky heroes, and at least on Quap, my, dis my, I've, di I've started to rush Vessel against these sort of lineups. And that I've makes sense. Is that something you'd ever consider on Storm, or, it, or still, like, you just want mana regen? No, Storm is... Storm is the most mana-reliant hero on the game, so uh, if you need to deviate from an item that doesn't give you a reason, you, have, you must have a really good reason for it, like a BKB against many, many stuns. But Vessel, that's not a good reason. So, what, how would you play against that kind of a lineup, though? Like, Let's say that you don't... I feel like Storm does have kill potential if he's far enough ahead, but like, let's say you're having an average game into like tanky heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like Storm can't solo kill most of those heroes. Yeah, like I said, most. So usually in, in, in the lineup like that, 
there will be at least one, maybe two squishy targets. I, I, I don't remember any game where I had five targets that I couldn't kill one of them. So <laughs> like usually there's at least one. There's usually there's at least one. Yeah, so usually... So you or... just call them your target and forget about the rest. Let me finish, man. Usually... Orc at first still makes sense, because you can still jump with your team to finish the tanker targets, and you can still do pickoffs on the whoever on their team is the squishiest. But yeah, as the game as the game goes on, as, as they start buying uh, like uh, Yulces and, and, and Glimmer Caves, in that case, team fight items like a Bloodstone and maybe Aghanims, maybe Hex, is their best bet, because you no longer if you no longer have solo pickoff potential, then you need to build to play around your team. And that kind of leads into another one of my questions, which is like, what is Storm's role if he can't solo kill any of the enemy heroes like pretty consistently or safely? In that sort of a situation, are you kind of like a disruptor, team fight disruptor, like a brewmaster, or like a disabler? Like, how oh, do you yeah. see your role in a team fight at that point? That absolutely makes sense. Basically, you you look at the enemy draft and you. You draw yourself a couple of goals. So let's say enemy has maybe a Bane. In that case, you will sit in the back lines, wait for the main to use ultimate, and then jump him. Or you, you they have a Void with Chrono Sphere. So you wait until Void uses Chrono. You zip past the Chrono and you use a Vortex. Bam, Chrono ruined. Same for Enigma. Maybe you can jump Silencer before he gets his salt off with the Vortex. Wait, you can Vortex in the black hole? Let me demonstrate. You can zip through and I know you can zip through it, but I didn't know you could vortex. If you find anything, well, let me know. <laughs> he's right. Uh, he's where's Storm? Okay, he's. Oh, it's. You get him. There you go. <laughs> same, same with the Chrono Sphere. <laughs> Do you have that on Quick Cast, by the way? Vortex? Absolutely, yes. I have everything on Quick Cast. Okay. With Storm reaction time matters, so if you're if you need extra millisecond clicking on the ground, that's that's very bad. Mm, that might be where I'm struggling a bit. Yeah, you should definitely learn learn to play with the quick cast. It'll help you in the long run, not only for Storm but other heroes. I have ball lightning on quick cast, but I don't have the vortex. It's especially important for the vortex combos. It looks like it. Yeah, it'd be kind of a little hard to pop. Maybe not too hard. Um, here's another question. Um. What are some of the most common mistakes you see Storm players making that you're like, oh my gosh. Like, let's say the enemy picks your Storm to deny you, which happens to me all the time as Quaff. Enemy will pick Quaff. And then I watch them play, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, they have no clue what they're doing, or I'm just wondering what you see that you're like, what are the big things that people do on Storm that are like, stand out as complete mistakes that I should avoid doing? <laughs> Well, usually, at least from my coaching sessions, people that make those mistakes, they do not realize they, they make those mistakes and they need to be pointed out for them. But uh, the general idea, the ones I point out the most is, uh, I think it's three things. The first one is they have, they are not very good at the mana management. They, they don't ship out clearances continuously, they, they over jump, they under jump, they fail to see little movements where they can uh, utilize mana more efficiently. So one of them, let's say you are walking towards a river rune and you have three battle charges. Instead of walking all the way, you can zip half distance and then as you walk, you refill your battle so that by the time you arrive by the rune, you have a full, full battle. And then other thing is as you teleport to the tower, you have lingering region, you can zip and spam battle all the way. 
is this is a little bit more common more people do okay. that but but not I, enough. I know the second trick what was that first one i i didn't fully understand that okay let me imagine imagine you're you're walking from the jungle camp to the mid lane to pick up the rune okay you have full bottle instead of walking all the way to the rune you zip half the distance and then as you walk to the rune you finish your bottle to refill the mana and then you pick up the rune and then you have full mana, you save some time by zipping, and you have the rune. Okay, so that's if you already have like full mana? Or mostly full mana? Yeah. You you, you always can suck it. If you, if, you, if you're full mana and you have means to, to refill the bottle, you will always want to spend some mana for movement along the way. Okay, and speaking of uh, the zipping tricks, when when do you definitively know that you can do the you know the D push where you ball lightning in and back? Yeah, what about it? When when that, when does that become possible? What exactly can you elaborate? What so you know like when the enemy is pushing your tower and you can't safely defend but you want to D push the wave with ball lightning? Yeah. Does that like is there a specific item where you're like, okay, I have like I have orchid, so I have enough mana in general to do that, or does that require something else like bloodstone? Uh, your ultimate is a percentage, so the items do not impact your ability to ball lightning as much as you might think. So ideally, at level tw at level eighteen, even without the items, you have full ability to D push. You will just you will just need to be smart about from what distance do you start a zip. I guess it's just something I'll have to try and get a feel for. Half of storm gameplay is practice. Yeah. But the second thing most storm players do and don't realize is they they are not selective about their targets. So for example, you are freshly you have freshly finished orchid. You have kill potential anywhere on the map, and and, and what what some people do is they like teleport to the mid lane when no one is there and just take 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 griefs and and, and and farm jungle. When in reality, you either push the tower because you have kill threat on the enemy mid laner and he might not want to show up, or you can secretly teleport to either of the side lanes and ruin their carry's day because you have orchid and you have no means to defend against it. So so that's the second thing. Uh, any questions about this this one? Um, timing wise, do you how do you feel about level six? Like, is level six your a gank timing for you, or is it just when you start looking for op for opportunities? Then it's orchid more when you actually uh, like look to start making kills on the map. Uh, symbol if. Before level 6 you have decided that your lane is the kill lane, then you will definitely want to look for kill opportunities at 6. And if you decide that it's a farm lane, then you don't start looking for kills until Orchid, unless the enemy is very recklessly diving side lanes towers or get a good rune. Hmm, Does your kill combo change if you are max remnant? Sort of, yeah. If if you max overload, then you can you can you will only drop remnant during the vortex combo. But if you max rem, no, oh, my bad. Uh, it's reverse. If you max overload, then you will only drop remnant once during the vortex combo, and you will finish the target with short zips. But if you max uh, remnant, in that case, you will want to be on top of targets to use from the top cooldown. Allow me to demonstrate. Forward. So this is what you will, would do if you max overload. Short zips as he's running away from you. Now the same, but if you have maxed uh, Remnant. Something like that. <laughs> okay, can I see that again? Sure. That went pretty fast.
There you go. Okay, okay. Basically, with the remnant thing, you will want to be on top of the enemy here all the time, but with the overload, you'll, you'll want to use uh, long distance zips, short, long distance short zips, if that makes sense, to prime the attacks. Okay, and if you go for the remnant farm build, um, I assume you're more selective about what fights you will like teleport into. Yeah, uh, if if I'm going remnant build, and of course I'm not looking to fight at all. I'm looking to get a super fast orchid. I'm looking to farm. So, so so uh, same as same as same as I said before. Basically, defend moronic tower dives. You farm jungle as farm hard as jungle. you can. To get that yeah, and everything. thing. That's it. Do you have a trick for mud golems, by the way? <laughs> oh oh I no. Hate I mud have... Everyone hates mud golems, yeah. It's like, it, it's like you, you, you walk into the jungle camps with your full mana and, and the small camp is mud golems and the next camp is, is as well mud golems. So you, ju you just yeah. abandon the game. <laughs> yeah, there, there is no trick. Just basically uh, try to kill both of them at the same time. Chupak the small ones, then hit each of them separately and one, one remnant should finish all them all off. Okay, are there any other common mistakes, by the way? Those were really good ones. Uh, the third one is derived from the second one. It's the... It's chasing bad kills. So, for example, if you are going to the... Going to your you're fresh orchid, and you have fresh orchid, and you're going, you're going to invade the enemy top lane, and there's something like a, let's say, drow. Not draw, let's say Spectre and a Dazzle. Okay, not Dazzle, let's say it's Spectre and uh, be, 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 be. some support that does not deal well with Storm. Let's say, let's say, let me consult the hero list. Yeah, let's say it's uh, Ancient Apparition. Ancient Operation doesn't have much armor, he doesn't have much health, it's a super easy kill for Storm. So what I sometimes see my students do is, if they, they go to the lane where there is a tanky carry and a squishy support, they will jump the support, they will kill the support, they will use most of their mana, the carry walks away. And that's a huge mistake. In reality, you should ignore the support or let your teammate deal with support or simply use the combined number advantage, so that's you, that's Orchid, and that's uh, enemy, your friendly heroes, two of them in the offlane, maybe one of them, one is enough. If you select combined jump, the enemy carry, carry is dead, and that's a way better target than killing a solo support and not having mana left for anything else. So again, you gotta, you gotta think about who you wanna kill. Okay, so you go for the carry, you don't go for the easy kills, like it's better. Is it better to take a risk and maybe not get a kill, but pressure the enemy carry like out of lane, than to yeah. get a free kill on a support? Absolutely. Anything you do that impacts game space, one action more than the other, you will always choose the action which impacts more space. A simple existing, you, you force the enemy to abandoned the lane, let's say 10 minute orchid against an anti-mage, he cannot show on the lane anymore because he will die every time. So just by existing you're forcing anti-mage to go to the jungle and, and delay his battle fury timing. That's the right play. So you'll always think about, you should always think about the, the plays that will give you the most space and deny the enemy the most space. You were talking about under and over zipping, um, can you elaborate on that? Because like I thought you want to zip you want to zip onto the hero to get all lightning damage, or no? Sometimes, many people, myself included, we we jump a little bit more than necessary. So, for example, if... Let me, let me demonstrate. If the enemy doesn't have much HP, you can just do a minimal zip and finish him on the Vortex combo, like this. Actually thinking about it, 
what you instead end up doing is uh, over zipping to block him and then doing the vortex combo which essentially uses up extra mana because you had to block his path when that wasn't necessary it might not seem like much but over time it accumulates so that's extra lost mana extra cost for clarities that, that's that's one of the smaller mistakes and there's there's always bigger cases of over zipping sometimes it's 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 done by the accident for example like the enemy went this way you are predicting his path but then suddenly he goes the other way there's nothing, <laughs> you, can, there's nothing you can do about it sometimes time, I think. yeah sometimes they, they just <laughs> some especially at lower mmrs when the players do not know what they're doing it works in their advantage because they like mm, i want to go here ah nah, i'll go here and as a storm if you want to <laughs> if you want to predict their path it's it really messes with you yeah uh it's a very broad topic i just gave a small example i think i i, I there's really not not enough time for us to cover every case of over zipping but you you will see yourself when you're playing when you when you could have could have used smaller champs instead of the large ones so let's say that you teleport, you get your Orchid, let's say you teleport to the enemy safe lane, you kill the safe laner, and you have no mana left over. Um, what is, like, what's going through your head at that point? Like, you're just popping a clarity and heading to the jungle? Absolutely, yeah. for next run? Usually, yeah, uh, your, your, your best bet is to pop a clarity, grab a camp or two as you walk to the middle, and then walk to the middle. If you're lucky, you might even grab a rune on the way, like uh, maybe it's time or 15 minutes, get a bounty, maybe it's 12, 14, 16, and you get a power rune. But usually, yeah, the best, the best course of action is to just pop a clarity and walk down the middle. It just seems like I remember, I haven't played Storm in a long time, but I remember being in a situation where like i would go gank a lane and i would try and do that like pop a clarity in jungle but i would just like be depleting my mana that i'm getting from the clarity while jungling and i'd just kind of still be like low mana constantly after that until i like i get a regen rune or go to base and for me that i just remember that being like kind of a sticking point where like every time i get a kill i just am wandering around with no mana constantly and it feels like a clarity just doesn't do enough yeah that's why over zipping is such an important thing to fix over zipping okay. for example using orchid when there is no need to use orchid when a target will die anyway gotta gotta recognize all these small opportunities to save mana if you if yeah, you if, if you're on point with your champs if you always keep a clarity running this will reduce the time yet you are low on mana and will reduce your base trips when do you go base? Like mid or late game, you, when you have like a huge mana pool and you've blown it all, is that when it's like time to go to the base? Yeah, usually after a huge team fight, or if I'm seeing that this team fight will definitely not swing in our favor, then I would just walk to the side and, and teleport back. And and, and usually with, with a play like that, you you get a second chance at re-engaging the team fight. Like, uh, let's try to use examples again. For example, there's a Void Spirit, uh, not, fa not Void Spirit, Faceless Void, and there's a 5 versus 5, 4 versus 4, 3 versus 3, something like that. And the Void Chronos you. So that already your team is at a disadvantage because your mid laner is under Chrono, Void is... Uh, void is probably going to kill you but you have threats on strength you had the talent health talent so you barely survive so what you do is you zip out of there using teleport of the process and now yes your team is fighting three versus four for example but the void does not have a chronosphere so while your team is slowly keeping the fight going you refill your mana and you rejoin the fight and you turn it around so that's one case where the teleport is uh, used to re-enter the battle. Otherwise, if, if the team fight was successful and you have no mana, in that case you can choose to go to the base. If if you ha you don't have many clarities, any clarities, or there is no rune spawning. But if there if, if there was a fight, then you can choose to simply have a clarity, hit a jungle camp or two, maybe a tower, 
and just wait for the nearest rune. Usually, if the rune is spawning in, in less than a minute, then that's what you should do. Alright, last question, and then I'll leave you alone. Uh, cool. What are the wor like? What are some of the hardest matchups for Storm mid, and uh, do you have any tricks for dealing with them? Oh, Jesus Christ, I get this question daily, daily. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's break. What what I what I say to people is is so they can think for themselves. Is, is you you break down what's annoying about the enemy hero into points. So let's say we put down right now we put down five points, which are annoying about the enemy hero. So for example, enemy Ember or enemy Void Spirit. What's annoying about them is that, that at level 6 I cannot kill them. That's annoying. I want to kill them, but I can't. So that's one point. Uh, second point, let's say Lone Druid. What's annoying about him is that I cannot lane against him because of the beer, bear. So ideally I will just de-push, but I do not want, I cannot dance around the mid lane. He limits my farming capabilities because he's forcing me to limit my time in the actual mid lane. So that's annoying about him. Now Clinks, at, um, after he gets the Orchid, not only Clinks, but also Sky Wrath Mage, those heroes get kill potential on you. And that's annoying. They kill you, you die, that's annoying. So that's three, so that's a third point. Um, well, there's 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 two more points. I think it's the the how fast they go out of control. So that's Meepo and Broodmother. They are annoying because if you don't deal with them early, they will take over the game. And there's a fifth point that I can't think of right now, but but you get the idea. You just basically think of the annoyance level and how many of those points a, a hero hits is how annoying he will be and how much of a counter he will be. So let's let's say Shadow Friend, he is annoying because he will force you out of the lane usually because of the many many raises, you will have to play around out. And after Yules, he has skill potential on you, so that's already two factors. So he's a uh, like a mid-tier counter. If we want to pinpoint the highest counter we'll want a hero that meets at least four or five of the cr criteria so um, let's let's go over the list L Lycan meets a lot because oh the fifth point is, is 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 how soon your tower dies so that's Lycan that's Death Prophet that's uh, what's the third one Vis Vis Visage Visage I'm not sure how to spell that name but anyway if you leave the lane your tower is gone so you're forced to stay in the lane so yeah, uh, if the hero meets only like one criteria, if you cannot kill him, like if it's a, if it's, if it's an ember spirit and a void spirit, I don't consider it much of a counter. I can play around that. But as the hero approaches two points of the criteria, three points of the criteria, four, I don't think there's there's a hero with all five. Just just I think that's just a four maximum. So yeah, three or four is when a hero be, really becomes a counter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um So if 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 you're up against an an enemy that's so let's talk about something like Meepo, like it's a hero that you want to pressure, but it's also like hard to pressure him. And he's going to have kill threat on you, so I I'm just like how would you deal with like a Meepo, I guess? Meepo falls into the category of mixed lane. So like if you sense an advantage, you can actually force him out of the lane. But, but if if he gets help, or if he, if he simply pushes the wave and, and goes to jungle, in that case, that lane becomes your farming lane. So so for the lane stage, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Either, either make him a kill lane or, or make it a farming lane. But afterwards, he does force you to itemize against himself so you'll want to use BKB after Orchid ASAP because from for, as soon as it gets blink he has a kill threat on you 
Uh, but otherwise, um, we're a competent team, me boys, and much of an issue. It is an issue if your side lanes lose as well and, and you lose all the space, but that's the case for many matchups. But for me, point going into the late game with with the BQB, with the uh, Aghanim Scepter, you shouldn't have too many issues. Unless you had pre-existing issues from the draft before. Um, I guess something I should have asked earlier actually is how to use your Overlord charge on your remnants and lane. Like, do you want to be... How how do you view harassing versus last hitting with them? You mean during laning specifically, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's also pretty easy to decide on paper. In practice, it might vary a little from from lane to lane. But usually, if if the enemy hero will not punish you from coming too close, like. Uh, if the enemy hero is the Ember, is if it's the Void Spirit, if it's Kanka, it doesn't matter how close you are. You can you can always just come up to the middle of the lane and trap a remnant, and that's a secured last hit. But if it's if it's, if it is someone that can punish you, so if there's if it's a Shadow Friend, he will stack races on you. So you, you don't want to come too close. If it's a Queen of Pain. She will also dagger you and right click you on the way forward and back. So that's also something you don't want to get close to. So in those, ca in those cases where coming too close will result in you losing a lot of resources in the health and mana. In that case you'll want to play from afar and use overload as a means of last hitting. Um, I feel like I play a good amount of Ember. I get destroyed when the storms are remitting these overload on me as harass like they just do it over and over and over and over i mean i can dodge the remnant itself with the slight but the overload proc is so i, I guess i'm wondering is like when do you harass with the overload proc i think we discussed this before it's it's when it, it's when you're maxing overload so maxing overload by default Max, means okay. that, that means by default that means that it will it will be your main main tool of engagement. Mm -hmm. That's for heroes specifically. Um, I think that's it. I think uh, I'm ready to go play some games and practice and get a replay to to show you at some point. Oh yeah, that that will that will make a lot of sense. I mean, you you got the three uh, down now. We need some practice. Yeah, I just didn't want to go in completely blind. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. As as long as you have picked up some useful information from this session, and as as long as at least some of it will stick with your game, that that's a that's a useful session. Useful session. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. I just didn't want to like I didn't want to start making bad habits right off the bat. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sorry, but you will make bad habits <laughs> oh, Be no. because you don't know. You still don't know what good habits are. I mean, yes, you have listened to me. You have asked questions, but I guarantee you, the in the heat of the moment, you will forget all about them. It's all about practice. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully, okay. Well, I'll have to get a replay to you sooner than later before I start ingraining them. Then. Oh yeah, sure. All right. Well, thanks for your time. No problem. Next time, see ya. All right. Take care.